Welcome to Proven Improbable, where we focus on metals, mining, and more. I'm your host, Maurice Jackson. Our featured issuer is establishing itself to become one of the world's leading graphite producers. I'm speaking of DNI Metals, trading on the CSC symbol DNI and on the OTC symbol DMNKF. Joining us for a conversation is Dan Weir, the executive chairman of DNI Metals. Before we begin, allow me to convey to our listeners that DNI Metals is a sponsor of Proven and Probable and that we are proud shareholders of DNI Metals for the virtues we will convey in today's message. Mr. Weir, welcome to the show, sir. Good morning, Maurice, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you as well, sir. Dan, we have some exciting news for shareholders today, so let's delve right into it, shall we? DNI issued a highly anticipated press release regarding assays from your flagship project, Voidsera. Please give us an update. Maurice, I think the best way to describe some of the drilling and the assay results that we've uh, put out is to bring up this map here and, and go through it. Um, uh, for people who have not heard our story before, uh, this is in Madagascar. We are about 50 kilometers to a port. The main highway is this black line that runs through here. Our property boundary for the Voitsera graphite property, remember we have two properties in Madagascar. Um, the property boundary for the first project is, is this red lines here on either side. Um, the, uh, the, uh, again, the main highway runs right up here uh, for the country, uh, I, I might add, um, and goes directly up to the port, which is 50 kilometers to the north. It is the main port for the country. About 90% of all the goods in or out of Madagascar come in and out of that port. So it's well established. Maurice, you've been to the port, you've seen it, and you've had a tour of the port, I believe too, so you saw the container area. Um, you saw how easy it is for us to ship graphite in and out of here. And One that's also, if I may add, if I may add into there, uh, yes. Dan, that is a world-class port. Yes, and it's being expanded as well. Uh, before Christmas uh, last year, uh, the Japanese announced uh, that they were gonna invest another $500 million into the port uh, for future expansion. Uh, there's lots of space now, uh, but they know that there's uh, uh, great growth in Madagascar, great potential in Madagascar, um, and they want to stay ahead of the curve and expand that port out uh, even further because we keep building bigger and bigger ships. And as you build bigger ships, you need deeper water. So they're going to expand the extend the wharfs out and make it even better. So back to 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 what we're doing. Oh, I, I must must also add that at the port city, there's a Caterpillar uh, dealership. So equipment is not a problem. Um, in the country, you can get John Deere equipment. You can get um, uh, 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 Kubota. Pretty much any other type of equipment you want. And a lot of those have offices and yards and repair depots right 50 kilometers down the road from us. So that is very strategic for DNI um, as we move forward. So this is part of the first project, Voitsera. A very small part is what this map is showing. The project is over 63 square kilometers. Again, this is just a very small snippet of, of that. So again, the highway runs up here. We built a road uh, in early 2017 uh, that runs right into the project. You can see it kind of winds and weaves uh, uh, on its way into here. This topography is hilly. Uh, it tends to be anywhere from about uh, 40 to 60 meter high, uh, these hills. So when you're building a road, you kind of have to wind in and about and around these hills. Strategically, um, uh, part of uh, our main zone, which is here, uh, is a ridge that runs uh, for many, many kilometers north and south here. So the when we start mining, we can drill it, or, or sorry, mine into the side of this ridge. So having a bunch of hills here, when you're building a road, it's, it's kind of a pain in the ass, but when you're mining and stuff, it's a strategic advantage to, to what we're doing, okay? Um, the, so we have two zones uh, that we have focused on so far. Uh, the main zone, which is here. This area between here and here is about 900 meters or almost a, a, a kilometer long. 
we know that it extends to the north and extends to the south. How do we know that? We've dug trenches up here to the north, here and here. They had lots of beautiful graphite in it. And this last trench that we dug here was just full of graphite. Um, those results will be out in the next couple of weeks from this trench here. This trench we dug down four, uh, four to five meters deep. Um, and, and, and again, it was just loaded with graphite. We've seen showings to the south here uh, of graphite. So we know that this zone continues probably for three to four kilometers across here, if not further. I've walked all through the bush all the way up here. And in fact, we intend to build an additional road to the, to the north going up here, about two kilometers to the north. There's a road that runs east-west in and across into here, and it has a bridge across uh, this uh, small river here. What's great about having this small river, and you can see it on the map here that runs down through here, um, we put a fording in the river here to get through here uh, and down like that, is we've got lots of water. When you're processing graphite, you need a lot of water um, to process it. Uh, graphite is, is one of the easiest um, minerals in the world to to process because it, like oil um, graphite is hydrophobic it hates water it tries to get away from water so having water in a tank um, is one of the easiest ways to process this uh, maybe in another interview we can get further into some of the processing Maurice but today let's just leave it at that the as I mentioned before we have continued uh, uh, assays that came out here the other day from the uh, from the main zone here. Uh, uh, four holes that we released. Um, three had beautiful mineralization. One of the holes was just outside the main zone. Um, what you tend to happen here is you'll have 300 to 500 meters across. Here is where you find the mineralization. And and what we've noticed is, is sometimes when you step just out of that, you'll you won't have you won't hit every single hole. But what we're very excited about is is that probably 90% of our holes uh, have hit mineralization. So that is absolutely amazing as we've been drilling. Um, the next drill results coming out will be from up uh, uh, in this area here. There's an old mine right here. I'm very excited. You'll see in the next couple, uh, couple weeks from some of these drill holes. The existing holes that we put out, when you're getting 11 and 12 meters of 4 to 5 percent uh, graphite, that is phenomenal. Those are just mining widths, allows you to, to, to extend this. As we continue to drill, the graphite here, um, as compared to other places in the world, getting results that are three to five percent grade in the saprolite is absolutely amazing. And 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 I want to use this example. You can find in some places in the world, uh, specifically in some of the hard rock deposits in Canada, where they tend to be upwards of twelve to fifteen percent uh, in grade. Now, here's the downside of that. Most of the very high grade uh, deposits in the world tend to be very, very fine, whether it's in Canada, whether it's uh, uh, some of these large deposits in Africa, they tend to be very, very fine. Fine material sells at $400 to $800 a ton, depending on the carbon content in it. Large flake, which is what a high percentage and the samples that that we've gone and tested were somewhere between 60 and 70 percent large flake large flake can sell somewhere between a thousand and upwards of two thousand dollars a ton um, so you can see here where yes maybe we don't have 12 and 15 percent grade but a three to five percent in saprolite and in in saprolite again is this weathered material where you can just go in with an excavator dig it up and process it um is a huge advantage our costs will be much lower than than what you will have in a lot of these hard rock deposits again being 50 kilometers to a port strategically gives us a huge advantage uh, as well in 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 what we're doing the assays, I thought all the drill results would have been all done and completed before Christmas. Uh, the labs are a little bit slow here right now, mostly because they're extremely busy. And what we're finding is um, that over the next couple of weeks, the balance of our assays will be done. 
Uh, there's a number of drill holes yet to come, as well as this um, the assays from this last trench uh, down here to the south, which I'm very excited about uh, as well. So, um, so more to come uh, that should happen over the next few weeks. All the samples are sitting here at the lab, uh, but they just um, need to be uh, uh, finalized and tested. And as soon as we can complete that, we will get that uh, out to the market. Um, in the meantime, um, uh, we are putting together uh, the resource, starting to put all this information um, in, into a model um, uh, and, and completing the resource study as soon as we can. And Dan, before we leave here, you've mentioned process, the word processing a lot here. Talk to us about the uh, pilot processing plant. So um, we've completed, pretty much completed the engineering on the, uh, uh, on the process plant. Um, what we have decided to do, because of some of the um, news that we put out uh, yesterday and will continue to put out here, um, we initially thought we would just build a small pilot plant. Okay? We have now decided that since we've got demand and we've got uh, 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 offtake demand in Korea, and I'm going to get into that, some of that details here in a minute, um, that, that we're going to um, uh, increase the quality uh, of the plant, um, make it a little bit sturdier and everything else. So initially where we thought the cost was going to be about a million to a million and a half, that's going to be probably closer to two million, maybe as high as two and a half million dollars. So, um, but what that will do is increase the efficiency in the plant, also make it uh, a lot sturdier and stronger that instead of just being set up on trailers and moving it around, it might be a little bit more permanent right now because we're going to need the feed for that. Um, that will then, all the testing from that will then lead us to building a full on commercial plant uh, over the next year and a half, we hope. I'll keep my fingers crossed uh, on all of that. Dan, you were referencing offtake agreements. Give us the latest details. So Maurice, we came out with a press release yesterday that we're extremely excited about. Um, people don't understand the graphite business. Uh, they think it is like gold or copper or zinc where you produce it and you just sell it out on a market. That is not, and I repeat, this is not how graphite or industrial minerals are sold um, in the markets. They are, they, they are individual contracts that you sign up with uh, end users. Each end user may use a different specification. So one guy may want large flake at 90% carbon content. Somebody else may want large flake at 95% um, carbon content. What I mean by large flake, um, you know, 70 to 80 mesh, somewhere in that range. Once you get up into the jumbo areas, then you get even higher prices. And again, depending on the carbon content that you're selling it at, you will have individual contracts with people. It takes a long time to, to get these contracts. And it takes a lot of time to, to provide them with samples, not only one kilogram samples, but one ton samples, 10 tons of samples. There's, there's a whole process you go through in order to do this. It was part of the reason why in 2015, DNI wanted to buy its own lab because we knew having our own laboratory here in Canada that we could make a concentrate from our projects in Madagascar, bring it to Canada, then sort it out to different specs, um, again, different sizes, different carbon contents, and be able to supply that to your end users. If you don't do that, then you end up spending a fortune, and by a fortune, I mean millions and millions of dollars uh, going out to other uh, owned laboratories to do the work for you, okay? It's part of the reason why since we didn't buy that lab in 2015, and again, that's one of the, the things that I wish that we could have raised the money in 2015 to buy that, um, that um, we're building this pilot plant in, uh, in, in Madagascar. The other thing about the pilot plant, because we've been negotiating with these uh, uh, Korean groups, 
Uh, all of last year, remember, they came to Madagascar twice. I went to Korea once, uh, met with the offtake people and have discussed samples and, 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 and specs and everything else that's led us to getting this offtake agreement uh, with this group called Korea Graphite. Korea Graphite is a subsidiary of a public company in Australia called Peninsula. This is very, very, very critical and very exciting. We're going to start at the end of 2018 to start delivering, delivering them 500 tons a month. In 2019, beginning of 2019, that ramps up to 1,000 tons a month. And then in 20, the, the summer of 2019, we ramp that up to 2,000 tons a month. Okay, 2,000 tons a month is a massive order. That's over 24,000 tons a year. Again, in the graphite world, those are massive orders. And we're so excited that we now have clients, we have a binding agreement with these guys in Madagascar, or sorry, in Korea, to supply the material from Madagascar. This is really exciting. I don't think the market fully is, is understanding how amazing this is um, as we move forward. We are also working with India, uh, groups in India, with groups in North America to get more offtake and develop as we move forward. I, again, this is very, very exciting. We had set out a mandate in 2015 and 2016. We knew the markets that we wanted to chase were Korea, India, and then North America. And that's exactly what we have been doing. Yeah, Dan, from a low end perspective here, 24,000 tons at $1,000. How much revenue are we talking about here? You know, if you want to just use rough numbers, I mean, there's $24 million in revenue. Um, I mean, that is huge, absolutely huge. And remember, you know, we're going to have 50 plus percent margins on this stuff. So we're going to have some great earnings uh, as we move forward. Um, and this is a clear path for DNI to get into production and start selling graphite, uh, which is what it's all about, right? Again, in 2015, we chased after this project because we knew it was 50 kilometers to a port. Madagascar is known for its high quality material. And that's exactly why we've gone after this uh, stuff. Um, we also knew that um, it's, it's a great place to do business. You know, Rio Tinto, um, Sherit, Sumotomo, Carez have all invested billions of dollars in the last 10 years in mining projects in Madagascar. It is an amazing place to do business. Carez, one, one last thing about Carez. So Carez is the national uh, mining company of uh, Korea. Okay, Peninsula and Korea Graphite already have partnerships with them uh, uh, in developing some assets in Korea. Um, they believe that they can bring them, that they can bring a lot of other large, large companies in Korea. Remember, what's important about Korea, um, if you look at the battery manufacturers in the world, Panasonic is number one, uh, LG Chem and Samsung are in the top five in the world in battery producers. So Korea is, a, is, is focused on lithium battery production. Um, they supply, uh, so for instance, LG Chem supplies all the batteries uh, for not only Hyundai, but also for GM in their electric vehicles. So, and, and, and let alone phones and computers and, and every other thing that we use lithium ion batteries in. So um, it's very, very exciting to have inroads into Korea. It's a big focus of ours. Um, and this is absolutely amazing having a deal like this. Dan, let's just backtrack here for a second. We're discussing the first offtake agreement here. Let's compare and contrast the potential revenue versus the current market cap. Yeah, Maurice, I think our market cap is ridiculously low. Okay, so we currently have a market cap of $10 million Canadian. What's that equate to? Seven and a half million dollars US. 
versus we have the potential here or 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 will have um, in 2019 of revenue possibly of 24 million dollars now that's 24 million dollars us so most market caps trade at a multiple to earnings or a multiple of revenue okay now i know we don't have the revenue and earnings yet but what i'm saying is is in 2019 we should be trading at a multiple to our revenue you know you can say whether that's three times four times whatever else or ten times right i mean we will trade at a multiple to our revenue and if our revenue alone is 24 25 million dollars our stock should be multiples higher of that uh, hence the reason why i believe right now our market cap at 7.5 million dollars is ridiculously low let alone the fact that many other players in the graphite space have market caps of 26 27 50 million dollars and and most of those i believe are graphite projects that will never ever ever get into production which highlights again the value proposition that we like about d and i metals switching gears here before we uh, wrap things up today can you provide shareholders with an update on the situation with cougar metals yeah i'm not going to talk too much uh the the lawyers will s uh, slap my fingers if i talk too much about uh what's going on i'm going to tell everybody to reference the december 8th press release that we put out and also the press release that we put out last week uh, with some of the um uh, the assay results or drilling results that we put out last week. We do have some information at the bottom of the press release that talks about the Cougar situation. Um, what I will say is, is um, that uh, uh, Cougar defaulted. Uh, we gave them a notice of default uh, on December the 1st. They had seven days to rectify that. On December the 8th, we issued them with a termination notice Part of that termination notice um, was because they did not make certain payments to us. Um, they uh, sent us a request for arbitration. We're obligated to respond to that request for oblig uh, request for arbitration. Um, think about this: if somebody sued you for something um, and you didn't show up in court to, to defend yourself, the judge is likely to to just judge in favor or give a judgment in favor um, to the other side. So we, we had to file a response to their request. I will tell you one important thing, and we put this in our press release. We have also filed a counterclaim against Cougar with all of this. As we move forward, and there's more information that I can give to the market, we will, okay? But at this point in time, we have filed a response to their arbitration request and we have filed a counterclaim against that. And that's really all I can say right now at this point in time. Well, thank you for those updates. Last but not least, uh, what did I forget to ask? Well, 2017 was a pretty exciting year. Um, you know, we got the, the project drilled off, a lot of trenching and everything else. 2018 is going to be even a more exciting year uh, because we are building the pilot plant, pushing towards uh, production. We'll have, I'm continuing to work on more and more offtake agreements. That is very critical to, to our plan uh, and to any graphite type deposit. Uh, demand, I keep getting requests for quoting on different, for different graphite companies uh sorry not graphite companies different end users looking for graphite so it's it's going to be an exciting year um, um you know we'll have resource studies out we'll start developing the second property um and and getting the pilot plan up and running and getting to production uh that's what this is all about um environmental permits we did all the filing uh before christmas i'd hope to have that all done before christmas um, the governments now are just getting back, you know, it's kind of mid January before everybody gets going again uh, in the governments and, and gets everything approved. So the next couple of weeks, uh, we should have our environmental 
uh, um, uh, permits all in place, and we're ready to go. So it's going to be a very exciting year. Yes, it will. Dan, if investors want to get more information about d and Metals, please share the contact information. Yes, you can get a hold of me anytime uh, on my cell phone. It's uh, 416-720-0754, or you can email me at danweir at dnimetals.com. I also would like you to go and look at our new website. It's uh, www.dnimetals.com. Um, it's 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 a, a great update uh, on our website, and the designer did a great job. So uh, um, uh, we're very excited about that too. And as a reminder, please visit our website www.provenandprobable.com, where we interview the most respected names in the natural resource space. You may reach us at contact at provenandprobable.com. Dan Weir of DNI Metals, thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Thank you, Maurice. All the best to you, sir. Thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Remember to like and subscribe for more conversations with the most respected names in the natural resource space. Check out our website at www.provenandprobable.com. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.